screen from Adobe Camera Raw. We get into this by selecting either a raw image and then clicking on it and bringing down the editor for uh, Photoshop Elements. Or we go through the editor, file, open as raw, and select a JPEG or TIFF file. Now that we're here, let's look at across the top. We have a magnifying tool, a move tool. We have a eyedropper for white balance. Uh, we can select a, a neutral area in the image to alter our white balance. Crop tool, a straighten tool, a red eye um, removal tool. We can set preferences and we can rotate the image right or left. In the upper right hand corner we have a histogram that shows the three uh, color channels of red, green, and blue that comprise our image. And we see here uh, red, green, and blue indicated as well. If we move our cursor into a given area you'll see that the values for red, green, and blue are shown there. We also have some tabs across the top. The basic tab which we see the sliders below it right here. We can also uh, look at the second tab which is detail. It permits us to uh, sharpen the image, do noise reduction. And finally there's a tab to uh, select the camera calibration. There were two of them available for uh, this particular camera, 4.4 uh, and 4.3. But we'll con concentrate primarily today on the basic tab and see what power it has. Down below us, the bottom, we have we can open the image, we can cancel uh, the operation with Adobe Camera Raw, we can establish whether we want 8 or 16 bits per channel. Uh, we'll keep it at 8 at this point, although sometimes we may want to process for 16. We can save the image and we also have apps access to help menu as well. We can, <clears throat> and this is the help menu coming up here now. So we have the magnification down here that we can establish either through the tool or uh, we can select from this uh, drop down menu here. Now let's take a look at our image and we notice that it is very dark as far as the detail and the trees are concerned and very light. We can just barely see the outline of a ridge up, up beyond here. And if we go up and look at our histogram we see a confirmation that our the detail in our shadow areas are blown out and the same thing is true in the highlight area as well. Now at the top of the histogram on each side are what are called clipping indicators. One for the shadow warning and if we click on that it shows us in blue on our image the areas where we've lost detail. And if we do the same for the highlight clipping indicator it turns the areas that are clipped red. I'm going to turn these off for now so we'll be less confused when we look at our, our image. Now what else can we <clears throat> do about this? We can alter the white balance. Um, this is set as shot but if we set it for daylight for example we notice that it warms the image up uh, a little bit. Uh, we could select something else like tungsten and really make it very cold, bluish cast to it. So the white balance can be set as it is uh, in the camera or it can be set here in Adobe Camera Raw. We'll return this to a shot and we have two sliders, one for temperature. We can alter this to change the warmth of the um, scene that we have below us. I like the little warmer view of it because this is a 
uh, summer morning in which the kind of a golden glow to it and we can also alter the tint if we want of the image as well so these are important uh, alterations that we can make to the image very easily and we can see the results immediately we also have an auto function here in Adobe Camera Raw if we click on that it makes its best guess as to uh, what the image would look like and you can see that it it uh, took away part of my warming that I had there um, we see that it improves somewhat the the dark areas in the image we still have blown out highlights here but we can see the ridge a little bit more clearly than we could before so the auto uh, helped we can then alter our exposure um, by moving this slider either up or down depending on what our preference is I'm going to leave the slider pretty much as it was originally because the exposure is pretty well on it's the lack of latitude that the sensor has that's creating our problems now when we clicked on the auto it moved up the recovery slider and this slider affects the blown out highlights and if I move it all the way to the right you notice that this improves sub substantially and we have a much more clear view of the ridge that was nearly hidden uh, before we started all our, our alterations another slider called the fill light can help us lighten further the shadow areas in the trees and this I think dramatically improves the detail that we can see in this scene I'm going to reduce the blacks a little further here so we have good solid blacks in the areas where they should be our brightness and contrast are are quite good at this point maybe increase the contrast just a bit since this is a fairly soft scene this makes the image snap a little bit more and we have a slider called the clarity slider which provides local contrast this has the effect of of sharpening uh, the image by creating sharper contrast between light and dark areas and we also have a vibrant slider which I'm going to use to pick up the the color a bit further warming to it begin to see the sun on the grasses here as, as it goes through trees to the left of us and then I'm further going to increase this just a tad more as far as the saturation I think that we're we're finished